If this is the first time for anyone, welcome. I'm so glad to be sharing the space with you. And yeah, this is this series is meant to uh, meet you where you are in your practice. So if it's your first time meditating or you're an experienced practitioner, I really hope that you feel that you receive something out of our, our work together today and each time we meet this fall. I wanted to today talk a little bit about self-compassion and then guide us through a practice. Um, self-compassion is one of my favorite things to talk about and to practice because I feel like of all the tools in the contemplative, you know, meditation practice toolkit, self-compassion is the one that can be, can feel like a saving grace um, on a day-to-day -day basis. It can really set a foundation for how we relate with ourselves and also how we relate with others. Um, I think one of the most interesting things about self-compassion and compassion in general is that it really does start with us, um, especially if we're having a challenging time with someone or are feeling just depleted or a bit burned out. Even if we're feeling difficult feelings towards another person, for example, um, guilt, if we're in a caregiver situation and a person is really um, challenging our patients and such, there can be this sense of oh, I should be compassionate towards this person. Uh, they're obviously suffering. And yes, this is true. And in terms of actually generating an authentic, deep sense of felt compassion, I typically encourage folks to start with themselves. So to start with in that situation, you know, relating to and being kind to oneself for having a difficult time in this dynamic or in this relationship or in this role. Self-compassion establishes trust. Um, I love that in a sort of under the radar subconscious way, when we exercise self-compassion or kindness toward ourselves, we're basically showing ourselves, our, our psyche, our subconscious, that there's someone there who cares. Like there's someone taking care of our difficult emotions or difficult mental states um, or the challenges that we're facing. It's the opposite of being self-critical. So if you can imagine your mind and body and heart and, and soul, this sort of embodied um, being that you are as a friend and as someone who you can extend care towards and kindness as your primary environment, even it becomes that much more important to exercise self-compassion um, at least, at least in my life. And I think this is typical. I wouldn't want to, constantly be around someone who's always criticizing me or kind of putting me down or someone who I feel like I can't trust to extend kindness and care in a difficult situation. And so I wouldn't want to be that way toward myself either. I don't want to be my own enemy. I don't want to be my biggest critic. And yet oftentimes that's kind of how the mind works. Um, so I just wanted to normalize that. And today offer a pathway forward that might be different from the default that that we're used to. Um, the default being a sense of isolation or self-criticism and the new choice, the new pathway that we're going to carve out being one of connectedness, connectedness to our own internal state, but in a really kind way and connectedness with the other people around us with our shared common humanity. So in other words, recognizing that no matter what challenges we're facing internally or externally, relationally in our lives, that someone is probably experiencing something pretty similar, if not the exact same thing, then something similar. And if it's hard to even imagine someone experiencing something similar because it feels like such a unique situation, 
I guarantee that there's still someone out there who's experiencing some level of pain or suffering, whether that's physical or emotional or psychological, even experiencing those existential, more spiritual questions of like, who am I? Why am I here? What is, what is life? Um, what is the world? So these are some of the things that we're going to kind of move through today. And just to offer an actual framework, um, self-compassion in its essence is compassion directed inward. So it's like the kindness, care, and compassion that we would offer a really good friend. And sometimes it can be difficult to, to think like right off the bat of someone who it would be easy to extend compassion towards because human relationships can be complex. So if that feels challenging, um, I wonder what it would be like to imagine, you know, if you have a pet or have had a beloved pet in the past and like you see your dog limping, they got a thorn in their paw or your cat is like not quite eating right. Like obviously there's something wrong and there's that natural organic sort of pull, a leaning in of care, like a it's a visceral response of what can I do to help? I'm here. I care. I, I want to step in. So it's that sort of feeling that we're hopefully going to like relax into, um, but with ourselves. Yeah. Cause it starts with ourselves. And the practice I'm introducing is called the self-compassion break, or it's based off that um, a psychologist named Kristen Neff uh, kind of coined that term and developed this practice of three parts. And we're going to explore the pillars of self-compassion um, according to her framework, which is um, mindfulness, uh, a sense of shared human, um, sh com shared common humanity. I always get trip up on that one and self-kindness. Um, so those are the three sort of pillars we're going to explore in our practice. And each of those pillars is this conscious stepping away from what can be the default of what we experience in difficult moments, um, which, which are more like being kind of wrapped up in oneself um, and over-identification instead of mindfulness isolation instead of the shared common humanity, the sense that, oh, this this makes me a part of the human family. And um, then, yeah, self-criticism instead of self-kindness or self-compassion. So we're going to make a move out of those and into self-compassion. Please make yourselves comfortable. Uh, we'll take about a minute here to transition into the practice and I will be starting and ending us with a bell. So yeah, just let your let yourself get comfy, cozy, finding a position that feels good. I'm noticing I just wanted to cross my legs on my chair. That feels more stable. And it's okay if sitting is not an option for you today. You're welcome to recline as well. So just allowing your breath to welcome you into the meditative space, allowing your eyes, your eyelids to gently close if that feels okay for you, otherwise resting, a soft gaze, maybe eyelids half open on a space in front of you. And taking a moment to just be in your breathing body. You might notice those contact points between yourself and the surface supporting you. You might allow the shoulders to kind of melt open if there's any tension or a sense of leaning forward in your chair.
I'm just taking a moment here to kind of listen, a way to drop into the present moment. So noticing temperature of the air in the room, the support of the surfaces beneath you or behind you. Maybe the coolness of the breath on the inhale and the warmth of it on the exhale. And one of the nice things about this self-compassion practice is that there's no need to push away thoughts or kind of push away something that's been bothering you or kind of nagging you, maybe today, maybe this week, maybe for a while. I welcome you in this moment to just invite into your awareness something that has been challenging, a pain point, a point of tension, maybe in your body, it could be very physical. Or maybe in your life, perhaps a challenge in a relationship, perhaps a self-critical thought. So just bringing it into your awareness, meaning we're not trying to push it away. We're actually kind of bringing it into the workspace of the mind so we can kind of get a better feel for it, a better look at it. And if a few things come up, I encourage you to just choose one to work with through this practice, knowing that when there's time for you to re-engage with the other content at another time, but just kind of settling on one and giving yourself as much distance as you need from it, especially if you're sensing that it's close. Just rest in that space of kind of watching and witnessing and recognizing too, though, like, wow, this has really been on my mind lately. Or this has been a part of my life. And this has been causing some pain or suffering. Inviting you to just kind of rest and relax into the spaciousness of this sort of workspace of the mind. And this is our first step of the self-compassion break, which is mindfulness. You might even notice some tension dissolving just in engaging in some mindfulness so this thing doesn't feel so sticky, like so kind of enmeshed in who you are. Just creating some separation, some distance, and watching with an open heart. With a sense of spaciousness. For some, it can feel like a real surrendering to this thing that's been maybe trying to get your attention and has been, but there's been this struggle to kind of keep it suppressed or at a distance. We're just kind of letting it out, giving it some air so that we can work with it in a way that feels self-compassionate and skillful. You might notice how it's been affecting you. 
what happens in your body or mind when this thing is present in a less conscious way in daily life just kind of reflecting exploring with curiosity what is this about I'm softening into it, this willingness to be with what's challenging or difficult. Just not fighting it so much, not creating that extra tension for yourself. Next, we'll move into this awareness of our shared common humanity so continuing to engage kind of reflect with curiosity on this thing that's been causing suffering or tension or pain and just kind of recognizing like wow this is something that is so quintessentially human and to experience challenge, suffering, even if it's a, it's a thought that's been looping, knowing what you know about our shared sort of commonalities between our minds and hearts as humans, just recognizing like this this makes me a part of the human family, that we all suffer in one way or another. Maybe with your particular thing, you know someone or can imagine that someone or some people somewhere also suffer from this, have faced challenges that are similar or maybe the same. That you're not alone in it. You're not the only one. And that this too is a part of life or of love or relationship or the challenges in our own sort of mental habits and fluctuations. And that life is complex. And in that complexity, there is suffering, there can be challenges, pain. And then to engage in this process with some warmth, with some tenderness. If it helps to gently rest a hand at heart center at any time, just to even feel the physical warmth of the palm on your heart. You're welcome to do so. And with that, we'll shift into the third and final phase of our practice of self-compassion, which is self-kindness. What might it feel like to soften into a kinder, friendlier relationship with yourself? Offering yourself the kindness or support you'd offer a close other, a beloved friend.
that might come out in words or phrases like, I know this has been challenging. I'm here, I'm with you. It might feel a little more dynamic as if your own wise, spacious, internal coach is telling you, yeah, this is hard and you can do this. We'll carry through. It might be a gesture of kindness. Again, like a hand resting at the heart or a gentle hug. Whatever you sense you need in terms of self-kindness, whether that's reassurance or feeling seen by yourself, feeling safe with yourself, just offering that. Taking a couple more moments to maybe soften into the deepest expression of this practice for you today. Giving yourself whatever you need to feel a little more safe or grounded or held. And then for those that choose so, you're welcome to engage in this sort of last minute of a bit of an add-on if you'd like. And if not, no worries. It's your choice. You can just stay as you are. But for anyone who would like to just open that sort of compassionate energy generated for yourself to the rest of the world, I invite you to, yeah, just kind of turn some of it outward, that energy you generated. Maybe it feels warm, like a glowing light, like a luminous healing energetic balm that can just expand outward from your body, from your heart center, perhaps. Expanding to the horizons. to kind of bathe the rest of the world in this healing, kind, compassionate light. And if it feels good for you, you might even repeat the phrase, may all beings be happy. May all beings be safe. May all beings live in peace. There's no need to 
kind of corral your light back in, your compassion back in. We'll kind of move to close the practice, but yeah, that can look and feel however you need it to, whether by sealing with a gesture or just noticing again the physical sensations of temperature, touch. Perhaps you even notice sounds in the soundscape of your room. And at the sound of the bell coming back to our shared space. So taking your time to come back. Um, yeah, I added a little bit more in the end there, as you can see some kind of visualization and expansion of that compassion outward, which can be a really helpful practice, um, especially, you know, it's no secret that there's a lot of pain and suffering in the world right now and um, in the news and yeah, happening all around. And if that makes you feel kind of like helpless or hopeless, starting with the self-compassion to resource yourself and then expanding it outward um, and the visualization of like the light or some actual sort of material thing expanding outwards can be helpful too. <laughs> 